All right, so for today's pre-lecture video, what I wanted to do was um, go over finding the magnetic field of a piece of current carrying wire. Um, this is a little bit involved in terms of the math, so I thought it would be good to devote a pre-lecture video to it. So the problem as it's posed is that we have a piece of wire. You see the total length of it is 2A. Um, it's put so that it's symmetric about the x-axis. And we would like to find the magnetic field um, along the x-axis, which would be um, cutting the piece of wire in half, so it's right at the center, and then some point a distance x out from that location. So we want to find the magnetic field right here. Um, the first thing that we could do is we can figure out the direction of the magnetic field using the easy right hand rule where we put our thumb in the direction of the wire, um, the current carrying wire. So the wire is carrying current upwards, so we put our thumb upwards. And we notice to the right of that wire and to the right of our thumb, our fingers curl into the page. And so you see right here that the magnetic field is indicated as going into the page. So we do know that. All right, so let's look at um, the law of Biot-Savart for finding the magnetic field to, due to a piece of wire. And the expression looks like this. It's mu naught i over 4 pi. And then we integrate dl cross with r hat. Remember, that's just a unit vector over r squared. All right, so when we look at dl, that's the little piece of wire, and we are looking at r. That's the radius vector that goes from the piece of wire to where we want to know the magnetic field. So it's parallel to this blue vector, but the unit vector, of course, just has a length. Now remember that the dl cross r means that we're interested in the sine of phi, because it's equal to dl times r hat times the sine of the angle between them. And so if we look at this angle here, here's phi, notice that the sine of pi minus phi is exactly the same. And so we're going to probably work with that angle because it um, is easier to write an expression for. But in any case, we've been able to simplify our expression so far is dl times r hat, well, just the magnitude of it, which is just 1, times the sine of pi minus phi, simply because that's the same as phi, sine of phi, over r squared. Um, now, we do notice that we're going to write r is written as the square root of x squared plus y squared. x squared is the perpendicular distance from the wire. Y is the vertical location that we are along the piece of wire. And so that's going to change this to mu naught I over 4 pi dl sine of pi minus phi over x squared plus y squared. Now, we can write the sine of phi, which is a, okay, the sine of pi minus phi, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite side is x, and the hypotenuse is x squared plus y squared, the square root. It's r, of course. So this is going to make our expression, what we can do is we can substitute this in right here for the sine of phi. Let's do that. So we get b is equal to mu naught i over 4 pi dl over x squared plus y squared, and then x times x squared plus y squared to the 1 half which is the same, of course, as the square root. 
And the last thing that I might notice is that this DL can be also be written as dy because it's a piece taken along the y-axis. So mu naught i over 4 pi dy times x. And now we can combine the denominator x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. Now, one of the things that we might not have noticed, but is important to notice, is that x is actually just a constant because it's the distance that we are away from the piece of wire. So I can actually take that outside of the integral. And I also might want to think about my limits. Where, what am I going to integrate? Now, hopefully, you notice that our integration uh, variable is y, because remember, x is a constant. And so we're going to integrate from minus a to a. So now, when we're doing this integral, we have a couple choices. What we can do is we could do um, some trig substitution, or we can look um, some integrals up in, in an integration table. There's actually some integration tables in your book in the appendices. And if we go back and look at that, let's just um, change color here just to make it noticeable. We have see in the back of the book, there's an integral that says dx over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves equals 1 over a squared x over the square root of x squared plus a squared. This is the form of our integral. Notice that for us, the dx in our, in our integral is dy, and in our integral, the x, which is the variable, is of course y, but the a actually corresponds to x. Now that probably is a little confusing, but if you just want to compare, these two things are the same, and these two are the same. And so we can use that to write what the answer to our integral would be. So again, let's go on to the next page. So what we had was we had mu naught i x over 4 pi, the, square, uh, the integral of dy over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. And then for comparison's sake, I'm going to put what we had for our integral table. I'm just going to put it over here to make it separate. And so using that, we can write our solution or the integration of this integral would be written, comparing to this form, it would be um, 1 over x squared y, y squared plus x squared. So hopefully you can see the similarities here. And then I have to evaluate it at minus a and a. And simplifying and evaluating at the limits. If I take the x squared out here, notice the x on the bottom disappears and I get 4 pi x. And then I'm going to get a over the square root of a squared plus x squared minus or minus a over the square root of a squared plus x squared. And that's going to give me, of course, that's going to give me a 2a on the top, so I'm going to get 2 mu naught i over 4 pi x 
a over the square root of a squared plus x squared. And that's what I got for my integral. All right, so we get back to here. This is the expression that I got through integration. So this is a segment of wire where x away from the wire and the length of the wire is 2a. So that's all the things that we have to remember. But I, I honestly, one of the things that often happens is that our wire is actually really long. If our wire is really long, what we can say is a is much bigger than x, which kind of means essentially that it's like it's we can actually kind of neglect the x in this expression in comparison to the a in this expression. And so when we do that, let's just um, let's take a look at that. If we take this and we neglect the a, so what happens is we get mu naught i over 4 pi times 2a x. And then this we are sort of saying, so we'll make this an approximate, is like the square root of a squared, because we're going to kind of neglect the a, the x, in comparison to the a, which is going to give us an a on the bottom and an a on the top, which will cancel out. And then we factor out the 2, and we're leave, left with this expression. And this is the expression that we're going to use the most. This is the magnetic field near a long straight current carrying wire. So basically when we say long current carrying wire, we're sort of essentially saying that it's almost like infinitely long or it's long enough that it could be considered to be infinitely long. And this is how we find when we're distance r away from the wire. So if we're looking at a big wire that the current goes like this, and then we want to know what's the field here this distance right here is my r, and we want to find the strength of the field at that location, and we use this expression.